Hello. Let's talk about when is it okay to veneer teeth that are mild to moderately crowded without orthodontics. This seminar is on porcelain veneer restoration of crowded teeth. When is it okay to veneer teeth that are crowded without the patient first going through orthodontic treatment to straighten the teeth? These are the questions that I ask in those cases. Would the teeth still require veneers if orthodontic treatment were performed? In other words, is the shade of the teeth, the condition of the teeth good? And if they were straightened orthodontically, would that solve the problem? Will the tooth reduction required be extreme, even requiring endodontics? Now, there are cases that you might go ahead and prepare the teeth to the point of endodontics, depending on the temperament and circumstances of the patient. If it's an older patient or someone that's very busy on the road traveling and orthodontics is just not going to be a part of the picture, then sometimes that may be at least a consideration. Will the gingival margins and papilla be symmetrical and of appropriate height following restoration? In other words, if you restored the teeth with veneers without orthodontics, would the gingival line and the papilla be appropriate? Will the restored teeth lengths and widths be appropriate if you restored these crowded teeth without first having the patient undergo orthodontic treatment? Will the long-term health of the teeth, periodontium, and dental pulps be compromised if you proceeded with veneer restoration without orthodontic treatment of crowded teeth? Will oral hygiene be compromised? What are the circumstances of the patient and what are the reasons they wish to proceed with veneer restoration without first undergoing orthodontics? You got to take that into consideration. Now remember, it's not just about the patient. It's also about you, the dentist. I'm not going to do anything that I'm not happy with once the restoration is completed. If that patient walked into another dental office and they looked at the work I'd done, I'm not going to do anything that I wouldn't be proud of if that patient walked into another dental office. That doesn't mean I'm perfect, but I'm trying to get it as ideal as I can. And if I know it's not going to work or be something that meets this criteria, then I'm not going to do it. Will the final rest restorative result with veneer restoration alone satisfy the patient and the dentist. So here's a case. This young girl had moderate crowding of these lateral incisors and she had a class two division two occlusion, meaning her front teeth were dished back this way. And she was in college and her mom came to see me and said that her daughter was just broken up about her, her teeth. She felt like they were so ugly that, you know, it just went all over. She'd really focused on these teeth. And I said, well, you know, we could go through orthodontics. And her mom said, no, that's not an option. She's in college. We need to do something, if we can, that has a, a pretty fast turnaround. So you can see the front teeth are dished back in, which is common with class two, division two. What that means is they would have had buck teeth, the front teeth would have been out past the lower teeth if they weren't tipped back. Division two means the front teeth would have been out here, but they've been dished back like this. Either the lips, it may not have been orthodontically done, but many times that occurs when bicuspids have been extracted for orthodontics. So this is when I devised this technique. I wanted to see what it was going to look like before I did it. I don't like to begin something. I don't know how it's going to end up. So I took some study models and cut everything that was out of the arch alignment back into the arch alignment, which meant, see a little bit on this tooth right here and this tooth right here. See, I've cut those back into the arch alignment and then waxed them up. See, this I cut back right here and a little bit on this one right here. And this, I did this, oh, 20 years ago or more when I worked out this technique. And then I cut between any teeth that were overlapped. I've cut between this one with a, a disc. 
you can read this article in the library of dentistrymasterclasses.com in the, the library of articles. Then I had my technician wax it up to the ideal. You can see they've made this a little thicker on the facial. See the facial is a bit thicker and now everything's in the arch alignment. So I did the same thing in the mouth. You can look at these cases in the library of dentistrymasterclasses.com. This is just an overview of them. Back then I wasn't prepping between every tooth. I was just prepping between the crowded tooth and including uh, the incisal edge, but I was only going halfway through the interproximal contact. Now I prepare all the way through the interproximal contacts back to the mesial of the cuspid on each side. Then we fabricated a matrix for provisional restorations, cemented those, and then cemented the final restorations. And so this is the final result before and after. So this, what I did with the centrals was just made them thicker so it didn't look dished back since we weren't undergoing orthodontics. And we ended up with this is her before and this is her after. Incisal edge position with lips in repose. So this is her before, after, and after. And that case was 20 something years ago and it's still working well. Now here's another case. This case looks pretty crowded, but you can see the thing that makes it doable without orthodontics, this woman and her husband owned a golf company and they traveled extensively. They were in their 50s and she said, I can't have orthodontics. The circumstances in my life are such, I can't have orthodontics. But you can see she had tetracycline stain and a lot of crowding. And the thing that made this doable was the teeth were turned. There weren't any teeth that were real facial verted, that were way out to the facial. They were just crowded pretty much in line with the arch alignment. So we had some crowding right here. And we tried to, a really good periodontist tried to graft this, and it grafted a bit, but not ideal. Remember, you can't just raise the gingival line to wherever you want it. A lot of how high coronally you can raise the gingival line from grafting has to do with the interproximal bone. Read the article by P.D. Miller in the article library of dentistrymasterclasses.com on gingival grafting. And you're limited by the interproximal bone as to how far up the tooth incisally you can bring the gingival tissue. You don't just put the gingival tissue on the tooth or graft it and you it ends up wherever you want it regardless of the interproximal bone or the alveolar crest level. So I first cut in between all the crowded teeth with a disc and then waxed it up. See, this is the primitive days of me cut, in, cutting interproximally. I didn't really know about wrapping back then. And then we waxed them up. You can see the modern cases I've done and how we do it, how I do it now. So these are the teeth preoperatively and this is after the preparation, this is me preparing the teeth. You see I'm cutting interproximally and cut all the way through from cuspid to cuspid. I want to be sure the preps draw. And you can see the, the preparation is not really that dramatic. So I'm including all the interproximal surfaces and the incisal edge of the teeth from mesial of cuspid to mesial of cuspid. And the bicuspids only prep halfway through the interproximal contact. So here are the preparations. So this is before and this is after the prep. See everything is in the arch alignment. And the preparations have not had to be that dramatic. These are the provisional restorations. This is the seating of the final restorations. And see, this is before and this is after the seating. It's all in the arch alignment, before and after, with some gingival grafting here. So I did that case back in the 90s. Here's another case. Crowded teeth, 
Crouch, she didn't like the aesthetics of her teeth, did not want to go through orthodontic treatment if she didn't absolutely have to. And you can see there's some crowding here, but it's still more rotated than dramatically facial verted. Same thing here, it's not way out to the facial, so endodontics is not gonna be needed. So first thing I do is just cut this back into the arch alignment with this, and then cut in between the teeth from cuspid to cuspid with the disc. You can read that article. Then I'm cutting the teeth that are out of alignment facially back into the arch alignment on the stone model and trim these sharp edges on the facial interproximal with a barred parker. Then my technician waxes them up so you know how it's going to end before you start. I'm not going to go through the whole waxed up model thing on this video, but you can read the article and watch a bunch more videos in DentistryMasterClasses.com. So these are the preparations. The everything's in the arch alignment. These are the before and after. The laterals here. No endodontics. Had some crowding on the lower teeth, but mainly the upper. Another case moderate crowding, the upper and lower teeth, and persons on TV and YouTube and just didn't like the look of his teeth. We talked about bonding, bleaching, but he wanted a much, a significantly lighter tooth and to get rid of the crowding. And orthodontics was really not in the picture because he traveled so much. You see the crowding of the lower, so same thing, cut the models in approximately upper and lower so that the technician's got all the latitude he, he or she needs with the wax up to make the teeth the correct uh, mesial distal width and the correct length. See how they're a little bit thicker and I'm not going to go through the waxing process on this. You can read the article in the library of dentistrymasterclasses.com. See the crowding down here was corrected with the wax up and we make our matrix for the provisional restorations off of the wax up models. So place cord around the crowns on the bicuspids and here's the lower restored teeth first and then we, well, here's the lower, then here's the upper. See how this crowding was corrected. No endodontics, no tooth sensitivity. We're still in enamel. Now this is the day I seated the restorations on the upper. I haven't seen the patient since then. That's my feeling about restoring mild to moderately crowded teeth without orthodontics. That's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time. Click on the blue link in the description below and subscribe to DentistryMasterClasses.com. We have an organized library of all the dental minute videos plus many, many complete comprehensive cases as well as very pertinent articles that all of us should read.